Hello, Auburn Trojan families and parents and students, if you're listening in. Uh, this is Mr. Gardner. Uh, I have a update as we end quarter three. Got a little bit of time left, and I'm trying to keep this under 10 minutes. Um, I really would like for families, for parents to sit down and watch this and just kind of see what's been going on at Auburn High for the last, oh, I don't know, a month or so. Um, and then kind of where we're heading. So I'm going to try to pack as much as I can in about 10 minutes. So if you would, please bear with me and indulge me. Um, that'd be fantastic. All right. We're going to move along here. And as we move to the end of third quarter, uh, COVID rates have dropped to their lowest levels. And that's pretty darn exciting. I don't want to spend a lot of time on the coronavirus, but I do want to give you a little bit of information. So one of the things that we share with students at least weekly is kind of what the district cases have looked like. These are COVID cases that have happened on district grounds or have been um, detected as students or staff members are at school. And throughout the whole pandemic, over 90% of all the cases have been, I guess, contracted off campus, but I at least about 10% on campus. But the good news is at Auburn High School over the last two weeks, we've had zero new cases. We're still testing kids and staff members, but so far it's all been negative. Um, we know that right now that if we don't feel well, as always, we should stay home. We know that masks are totally optional right now. And as time goes by, and I think as the numbers can kind of continue to trend down lower, we're seeing less masks all the time. And, you know, that doesn't mean people aren't making situational decisions, too. Uh, I notice when kids are kind of in close quarters, I see more masks versus when they're kind of out and about. Um, we're still letting kids know that washing and sanitizing our hands is just good practice. And then, you know, want to really be socially safe in terms of our distancing because, the virus is still out there. We know it has less of an effect on people. It, it can still get people sick and we don't want that. And then just being aware. So just know we're still talking about that. We've been able to pull out a lot of the signage around our school. We don't look like a highway anymore. We're able to kind of pull the tape up off the floors and the little decals and all that. So it's just starting to feel a lot better around Auburn High. So we'll comp continue to remind everybody about our layers of safety and our families should be proud of their students for doing a good job with the code with guidance. They really have done a fantastic job and we'll continue doing the things we need to do. All right, there's seven days left in quarter three today. I'm, I'm videoing this on a Monday. It's March 28th and progress report grades and teacher comments, those are all gonna be uploaded into Skyward. So they should be accessible to you after Wednesday afternoon. And, you know, we've done the migration to the new cumulative. That might mean something to you, maybe not. So we're having still a few bugs with that and, and with the implementation. So we're hoping you can start seeing your students' progress reports by late on, on Wednesday. If not, take a look at it on Thursday. If not, take a look Friday. If you haven't seen anything by Friday, definitely contact the school. All right, what's going well? Dual credit courses are doing really well at Auburn High School. That would be our AP courses, college in the high school, tech prep. Um, we've grown courses of rigor and the kids have come and they're doing a great job participating. Uh, we're noticing that uh, student club participation is way up and attendance is up for many students. Um, it was really rough during the, the, the tougher days during the pandemic, but we're seeing things are really starting to pick up. What are some areas we need to grow? I guess it would be respect and regard for others. Uh, school safety is a priority for all and students will be surveyed on school safety in April. So we've done some surveying of students uh, and staff and, and also parents on, on different aspects of school. And one of the places uh, our kids feel like they do a good job is, is giving respect to others, but they've also recognized that they're not always receiving respect. So. You know, we, we de definitely want to make sure we make that something we, we talk about in our classrooms. And I would say when, when you walk around our school, 95% of the kids are doing a great job, maybe even a higher percentage than that. Um, school safety is a priority that really stuck out in a couple of surveys that we've had in our building. And that's not just for students, that's for staff and administrators too. We've had some fights. Our fights are lower than they were, you know, in 2016, 17, um, and they really started going down before the pandemic where we had very few, but since everyone's been back, they're kind of picking back up. And, and even though, you know, it might only be two people in a fight on a particular day, 
it just creates quite a ripple effect around the building and really puts people on edge. So those are things we're working on and we are disciplining students for that, but we also need to work with students and make sure that, um, you know, everyone's rights are protected too, but we're working hard on that. So the students will get a, a survey. Um, this is some of the data I told you about when kids uh, felt like they were not getting respect, but they're also giving respect. And that was almost 1200 students that took that survey. So anyway, that's something we're going to have to work on as a school. Um, and we will. And then your students, like I said, will be receiving a survey later in April. I don't know if we're going to do it before spring break or after spring break, but we'll do it in Troy time. And we'll also make it available for the students if they need to be working on academics during Troy time. But we want every student to give us voice on this, to give us ideas and kind of what their perspective is. As you work with your students at home, tell them it's really important that they take this survey from their own perspective, not things they've heard about, not previous schools they've been to, not last year during distance learning or the year before. It's really kind of the here and now is what we're trying to get from our students. Okay, something to think about. Semester one academically went really well. Uh, I don't really like to compare us against other schools. I like to compare us against us. So when I go back to the 2019-20 school year, that was the year the pandemic hit in February, March, fall semester was the last normal semester we had in school. So I'm doing some comparisons with how we did semester one this year versus last year. And it's, it's, it's excellent, it really is. Um, it's not promising, it's, it's basically better than we've done before. Um, also something else we found as we look at our data, students with more consistent attendance and consistent first period on time arrivals were most successful. So we have students who show up late a lot at the start of the day and more often than not, their first period classes tend not to be a great place for success for them. It's hard to really get grounded. Once your students are in school, most of them do a really great job getting to class on time. Better school attendance will improve academic performance. That's the main thing. Um, here's some data that we ran and we've shown this to the kids at lunchtime. I don't know how much they pay attention to this. I think they listen I think they, you know, we kind of plant seeds, but it's interesting how kids who are here a lot, they tend to pass their classes pretty much every time. Kids that miss a little bit, maybe 10% of their classes, they still are passing the majority of their classes, almost 95%. But when you see students missing more than 10% of the day, 10% of each school day, um, or each day, I should say. So if it's a 90-day semester, if they're only here 80 days or less, it becomes more of a struggle because then you get into makeup work and trying to keep up with the today work. It's just tough. So, you know, this is not a judgment call. This is just an awareness. Um, we know there's a lot of families struggling in terms of taking care of things at home. And of course, you know, we've had the, the quarantining and the protocols and all those too. So, you know, what I'm telling kids, those days when you don't feel like coming to school and if you're feeling well, you should be at school. So anyway, if you need any help with that, definitely reach out to an administrator or a counselor. Uh, the other things we showed them, we wanted to be more specific. We got into our core classes and two of our science classes, biology and next gen, and just about every one of our students will touch at least one of those, if not both of them. And we showed them, you know, if you're there 95% of the time, 97% chance of passing it. And if you're there, you know, at least 90% of the time, you have almost a 90% chance of passing it. And we know our kids aren't numbers, but these numbers are represented by real kids. So once we start to see less than 10% or less than 90% attendance, we start seeing significant drop offs. So those are some goals you could work on as a family if you're having a tough time with attendance and work with your student. And if it's really, really chronic and it's not great, um, definitely reach out to your counselor, administrator, and, and we can do all kinds of things to help your students maybe become more motivated, figure out what challenges they have. But we, we're a better school when your kids are in school every day. All right, some highlights from March. It was a long month, but winter sports were highly successful. Our boys basketball team, our state 3A champs, our girls basketball team was uh, league 3A champions. Our wrestling, gymnastics, and swim team sent several boys and girls to the state tournament. Um, so it was a highly successful season. And of course, congratulations to our state champion boys basketball team. And later on this month, they'll be on to the state of Florida for a national tournament. They're actually going to play for a national championship, which is exciting. 
Uh, highlights from March are also our spring band concerts were excellent. Hopefully you made it there. There were six performances of Willy Wonka and our drama director's goal was to get as many kids involved as possible. So great job with that. Recently, we just had a high school, middle school orchestra concert. It was excellent. Uh, last week or two, we ran the Auburn food drive. Uh, last week, our AHS students, staff, kids were selling foods, all kinds of really good projects going on, but we raised $6,500 for the Auburn food bank. And uh, Columbia Bank has agreed to match us for up to $5,000. So as of right now, our school totals over $11,500 for local citizens for the food bank. So that's, that's pretty outstanding. Um, here's a couple photos. This is from one of the spring band concerts. They did a great job. This is from uh, uh, our cast from Willy Wonka, one of the evenings taking a bow. It was just a really great performance. They did six of those, worked very hard for that. And we're just so proud of the kids. Other highlights from March, journalism program, senior student received a superior at the state journalism conference in early March. Speech and debate, five of our students qualified for the national tournament this summer in Louisville, Kentucky. Our speech and debate coach, Erica Moore, was selected as coach of the year. This is our first year back with debate in a long time. Our DECA program had 10 students who will be competing at the nationals. Uh, junior ROTC qualified for regionals this month. Uh, orchestra had seven musicians qualify for state. There were two musicians who participated in the Western International Band Clinic and Skills USA. We had two carpentry students placed high at regionals and are selected to compete at the state level. Um, just lots going on, and I can't even come close to touching everything, but just wanted to let you know that we feel like that we're, we're getting a lot closer to being back. Um, of course, we're a school of academics. So I don't want to forget about that. Uh, we are starting to spotlight different data points, and I promise you not to bore you with this. You can look at this at your leisure, but we found out our math department has made some incredible, incredible growth and also some shrinkage in something called the achievement gap. Um, and I'll show you what that means if you take a look at this. These are students, uh, all of our students who are in math classes, and what they're broken down into is students who are um, non-English learners. They are learning English right now as a second language. These are bilingual students. And then students who have English as their first language. So if you go back to that last semester when we were normal, the 2019-20 school year, for students that didn't have to also learn English while they're learning math, um, they pass at an 83% rate semester one. Um, if you look at this year, it was 85.63. And if you look at our English learners, before it was 56%, now it's almost, well, 68.38. So you can see they improved over 12%, but the gap shrunk. It used to be 27% between those two groups in math. Now it's 17. It's still a large gap, in my opinion. We got to get it even smaller and smaller, but we're heading in the right direction. Another group is, uh, this is more of a uh, economic piece for those who qualify for free and reduce and those who don't. Um, you can see who were not free and reduced before it was almost 86%. Now it's almost 87.5%. And our students who were lower socioeconomic were 72.5%. Now it's almost 79%. So you saw how much that gap shrunk from 13.49 to 8.97. That's a nice significant drop. But again, it's not good enough. And we'll keep working hard until we get it. Another program is general education students. Now these are all general education classes and then students who are served by an IEP who are also in general ed math. You can see before um, the kids that were not on an IEP passed at 78.4%. Now they're up to 82. Um, before it was 66% for students with an IEP. Now they're up to 82%. So you can see how much that gap is shrinking. Our math department is doing some very incredible things. If you're wondering how many students that is, you can see the end sizes for gen ed students. You can see in this case, it's over 4,000 um, grades. These are grades, these aren't people. These are grades that were earned. And then for special education it was 162 grades were earned. So. We feel really good about that. And then the last one has to do with race and the way the state has us break it down are white and Asian students who traditionally, historically have done well in a public school setting. 
and not are not considered the historically underserved. You can see before they were passing their math classes at 90.43. Now it's up to 92.55. Our students of color used to be at 70.2. And you know, they had to get through this pandemic too, which we're still in. Now they're up to 76.36. Still too big of a gap, but the gap is shrinking. So we feel really good about the work we're doing. We're really proud of our math department. We're looking at each of our departments. The last I heard from the administrator who coordinates and supports science is he's seen some very similar numbers. And what we'll try to do is get that out to our staff and our students. And we'll try to share that with you maybe later too, but we feel really good about that. Um, looking ahead, seniors have their next senior class meeting on April 27th during Troy time in the Performing Arts Center. We should be able to have an in-person meeting. We haven't had one of those in shoot, two years. This will be our third of four meetings, and we will share cap decorating and cultural adornments for the big day. Now, Jostens was just in our school last week. They passed out caps and gowns for those who's purchased them. Some students asked me if they can start decorating their caps. I said, yes, you can. Keep them school appropriate, of course, um, but we do give them a little bit more information at that, that uh, senior meeting in April. So if you can tell your students to kind of hang tight, we give them some good ideas, and of course, their good ideas are, are amazing, too. And our kids have had a lot of fun with that over the last few years. The high school and beyond plan, the second bullet you see there, those are Zello lessons. They must completed, be completed for credit, and that's all students, not just seniors. But I'm telling you right now, it's a senior graduation requirement by the state. Every senior must complete their high school and beyond plan, plus they earn a half credit for the year by doing that. All seniors, you have to complete 10 hours of community service and it must be logged as a grad requirement. If you don't know how to do that yet, don't worry about that. We're gonna give you that information in Troy time. Senior prom is looking promising. There's no official word yet. We kind of have to wait to see what this Omicron thing's gonna do. And as long as it doesn't spike, I think things are looking good, but we will let you know when we have the official word. It should be very soon. Auburn High School graduation is scheduled for Saturday, June 18th at 6 p.m. on Troy Field at Auburn Memorial Stadium. No details on seating and tickets just yet. We haven't sat down to start doing our, our big picture organization, and um, that's going to start happening probably right after spring break. We've had a lot of different requirements, a lot of different guidances we've had to follow with graduation the last two years. So we, we really do this kind of lockstep as all the high schools. And this year will be no different because the coronavirus is still around. We still have to respect it. Um, but I'm hoping that things can be a lot looser um, this year versus last year, although last year's ceremony was great. So anyway, that's it for now. Hopefully I didn't keep you here too long. Those are kind of the highlights of things we want to continue working on. And um, everything you're doing to support your students, we appreciate and have a great day. We'll talk to you soon.